Errol Spence Jr. gets called to task by Ryan King Ray Garcia, who's busy talking about things <laughs> that he shouldn't be talking about in the lead up to his fight with Devin Haney. You would think that Ryan got more important things on his mind, but hey, man, nah, he doesn't. But he definitely confirmed something that we have been thinking and suspecting. So, hey, man, let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Fanon. And in this video, we're going to be in the 147, 140, 147 pound division where Ryan Garcia, who will be fighting Devin Haney, won less than a week from today in uh, Brooklyn, New York. At the Barclay Center in an attempt to win Devin Haney's WBC 135 pound champion came out and confirm some things about Errol Spence Jr. and his trainer, Derrick James. Specifically that the fight is not, that those two guys are not working together anymore. So when Errol said that he needed to find a new home, well, now we know for sure what he was talking about, at least with an even higher degree of certainty. Only thing is, Ryan Garcia didn't stop there. And talked about what the what the breakup was about. Now, before I get into it, and I'm also going to tell you, that's not the whole story. But before I get into that, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you can be notified when we release more videos. And if you're a longtime subscriber and supporter of the channel, thank you so much for your continued support. It means a lot to the channel. Uh, and thank you to Barbara D, Maddie O, Big Mike. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that new. Uh, you've uh, contributed a few times, man, with big five dollar hollers to support videos like this. So thank you, sir. Um, but let's get into this because, you know, I don't understand why Ryan Garcia is out a week like doing these doing these Twitter spaces and these long conversations the week of the fight with Devin Haney. I think that he is doing Devin Haney a big disservice uh, in the way that he has behaved leading into this fight. There is uh, there is very little interest. Well, let me put it this way. Very little movement in the ticket sales for this fight. And I think some of it has to do with the fact that Ryan Garcia has made people wonder out loud whether or not he was going to actually make it to the fight. So now that we're within a week of the fight, it seems as if he's going to make it to the fight, right? But he's still out there talking about things and having conversations about things that really don't have anything to do with what he should be focusing on if he's serious about winning a fight with Devin Haney. If he's serious about getting in the ring <clears throat> and getting a check, okay. However, the least, the less he focuses on it, the less those checks are going to be. But as far as what he says... He says, yeah, this is a shame that I'm paying uh, Derek James more money than Errol Spence Jr. is paying uh, Derek James. Why would I be paying Derek James uh, more money in a fight where I made less than Errol Spence Jr. is paying Derek James when he made more? Now, he's not saying how much the money is that he's paying. So we don't know if, you know, Ryan Garcia is just extremely, extremely um gracious with his trainer and how much money he's paying Derrick James or whether or not Errol Spence Jr. is extremely cheap in what he's doing or whether Errol is reasonable, whether Errol is reasonable and and um, Ryan is gracious or Ryan is just paying what everybody pays and, and Errol is just doing the man dirty. Unless you know what the totals are, you just don't know. My understanding is that there's a standard pay scale for a trainer, which is 10%. So if Errol Spence Jr. is playing below the 10%, then that's an issue. But if Errol is paying 10% of the purse, that's the going rate. So if you're paying the going rate and your purses are getting big, hey, man, there you go. 
Also, why could he be paying more? Well, maybe Ryan Garcia's purse is bigger. Maybe Ryan's purse is bigger and Errol's purse is smaller. And that's a, that is the case a lot of times with fighters in the PBC. There are times where I know that 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 um, Errol Spence Jr. has had a purse of one point five million, but he earned a lot of money on the back end where uh, guys like Shakur Stevenson have had purses of three million dollars and there was no back end. So I don't think it's so straightforward as to say, um, you know, what's the, what is the. Um, what you know, whether or not somebody's being cheap or not, especially if you don't know the numbers. But when you look at that, you have to figure, OK, if Dare James gets three million dollars, say Ryan Garcia for this fight with Devin Haney gets three million dollars and that's his set purse, three million dollars. And then he's going to put it on pay-per-view. He gets beyond that. Right. Well, then that is three hundred thousand dollars. That's 10 percent of three million dollars. But if Arrow takes the chance and says, hey, man, give me one point five million and I'll get my money on the back end. Well, he gets 10 percent of one point five million, which is one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And that's just the way business goes, because Derek's not taking any risk. Derek's not taking any risk. All of the risk is on Arrow for the additional money. But if if you're if you are getting a bigger set purse, then guess what? You're not taking the fighters, not taking any additional risk. You're getting what you know the fighters getting, which would explain why, again, even if you look at the case of Terrence Crawford and how Terrence Crawford, they said uh, Bomack was getting more money from fights with Terrence Crawford than Arrow was getting from fight. Uh, then Derek was getting with Arrow. Well, why? Because Terrence Crawford is getting bigger purses, six million dollar purses. Ten percent of a six million dollar purse is is uh six hundred thousand dollars where errol again was getting two million but a back end so that's two hundred thousand so what is the what is the fighter supposed to do despite the fighter in the case that you are fighting with a smaller purse and you have to actually earn your money through ticket sales i mean that that affects yeah that will affect the payment of the of the trainer but that's more the structure of the agreement that the fighter is taking because the fighter's not getting offered a set fee in that particular situation that's high enough to justify a percentage that will equal what somebody will but also you know it's a matter of risk right the the trainer is not risking anything in any of those scenarios the risk the trainer is getting paid off of what uh, off of what the purse is. Now, if the trainer says, hey, man, I wouldn't mind having a percentage of the purse. Well, is everything going to be on the back end? 10% of the back end, which can fluctuate greatly. People, buy, fighters are the ones getting hit and punched and doing all of that stuff. And then are on the, whose names on, on the marquee, not the, not the trainer. So I think that that was just an, oh, like him to ask that question. I mean, it's quite obvious why the payment would be different between them. If you if you think about it for a second. Anyway, that's my take on the matter. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Deuces.